So all the way from Kent, south of London, Paris, France, NASA. We're going to discuss how a pit portrait is turning into a uh, business with Sama. Sama, could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Hello, um, I'm Sama Martin and I'm a fine art pet portrait artist. So I uh, run my business on pet portrait commissions. A customer asks me to draw their pet and I draw it for them in my style and using my materials and techniques. That's a great introduction. So uh, the first question <laughs> is why and what did you learn at NASA? Okay, so I did a brief three month internship at NASA when I was a, an aerospace engineer. So originally I didn't study art. Um, I went into aerospace engineering because I was really interested in space and aeronautics and that kind of thing. And I was told um, that art wasn't a career option. It was more of a hobby. So you should go into something that like, you know, be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or, you know, those sort of things that society pushes on you. Those are the right career options and art wasn't one of them. So at the time I chose to be an engineer. Um, so I went on to study aerospace engineering and then I later on studied um, at the International Space University in Strasbourg, which was an amazing opportunity and I loved every second of it. Um, and studying there gave me the opportunity to do a three month internship at NASA Ames Research Center in California. Um, that was a, an amazing experience there. Um, I met so many incredible and intelligent people. Um, I was in charge of a small team of other interns um, and I helped them with their projects and this was their summer internships during their university degree. So I was helping them with their projects and um, making sure they were achieving their deadlines and things like that. Um, and then I was also doing my own project, which was um, learning some new stimulation software, which they have, where you can create your own UAV design, which is an unmanned air vehicle. And then you can run simulations on it on different planets in the solar system. So I was doing one of uh, running simulations on Venus, which was really fun. <laughs> That's really interesting. So my question yeah. is, is like really related. Why did you decide to leave this background of space and science and, and, and business and then uh, go into art? Well, um, after my internship, I started my PhD. Um, I thought the next, the next thing for me was a PhD. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after achieving two master's degrees. I was like, okay, what now? Okay, I'll do a PhD. Um, so I started my PhD, which is lasering of metallic powder for in situ resource utilization. So basically, I wanted to take a machine to the moon or to the surface of Mars, uh, use a laser to 3D print using the, the dust and the particles and the surface of that planet, put it into this 3D printer to produce materials and tools and that kind of thing. So that was the basis of my PhD. And I started doing that. But in the meantime, I started back up with my art. I was doing painting and drawing, and I just really loved it. Like it, it excited me more than the PhD and the engineering. Like it sounds really exciting with the engineering side and everything, but I just, I was more passionate about the artwork and creating art. Um, so I decided to quit my PhD and <laughs> launch full into the art business and selling my artwork because it just, I felt like I got to the point with the engineering that I'd sort of done what I wanted to do. I did what I set out to achieve. I, you know, got my degrees. I worked for NASA. I started a PhD. I might finish it one day, but maybe not. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I just, I just felt ready to do the next chapter of my life and really dig into my passion because I was so adamant that I could make art just as successful as career. I was making my engineering career. So yeah, and that's what I've done, I think. <laughs> Good job. So my question here, like, was your passion strong enough to stop you from pursuing uh, NASA and the astronics and get into art? Um, yes, like, you know, when people say, oh, they can't 
physically stop working. They love doing their work. They love their job. They go, they go to work and then they come home and then they carry on working. That wasn't me when it came to engineering. I struggled to concentrate and do my work and I'm dyslexic. So I find it very difficult to read a lot of things. So, you know, reading and research isn't easy for me. And I've always, I didn't know I was dyslexic until I went to university and did a test. And then they told me, I was like, ah, so that's why I find it hard to read. Um, but yeah, so it was always a struggle for me. Engineering, you know, it was exciting. I loved it. I loved learning. I love, you know, educational experience, but it was hard to keep up with the people that were passionate about it, that did it every second of every day, that read every article ever about that specific subject. Like I was, I didn't feel that way. But when it came to my art, I did. Like I physically couldn't stop drawing. I couldn't stop painting. I couldn't stop researching new techniques and new brands and new materials. Like I loved all of that. So it made sense that that's what I should be doing. You should do the thing that you can't stop thinking about. So yeah, and that's what I do now. Like I can't stop doing my business. <laughs> That is great. Like <clears throat> getting to your business, what are the main characteristics of your art? So specifically, I started my pet portrait commission business when people contact me wanting to draw um, their pet. So um, I would, I've got an example here. This yeah. is an example of one of my pet portraits. Um, so I specialize in color pencils. So this is a color pencil drawing. Um, and then I put my own spin on it to really bring out the character and the soul of the pet. So here I've added like this really nice colorful warm background because this is a, um, I think it's a Corgi Australian Shepherd mix. And they're very excited and energetic and they're like really, really happy characters as you can tell by his little grin. So I added this like really warm, um, happy background to really emphasize that character and soul of this pet um, and the customer was really happy with it. So, and that's basically what I do for my pet portrait business. Um, I also sell prints and calendars as multiple streams of income. And I've now started doing oil paintings. So here I've started doing um, like botanical artwork, really looking at lighting and color. And I'm really trying to like master those old techniques um, by myself as a, as a self-taught artist, I haven't really done any classes in it, but I'm trying it out myself. Uh, yeah. So my question here, like about your thinking about and your confidence in your art, like in the, mm -hmm. in the is it the same while, while through the journey and this moment where when we, we can say that you are more a professional artist? Yeah, so when I first started my pet portrait business, this was back in 2016. Um, I wasn't as confident as I am now. So I was just like selling my artwork for, you know, 80 pounds for a huge one, like double this size was only 80 pounds. Um, and I wasn't confident in my materials yet. I only had like a small pack of pencils because that's all I could afford at the time. Um, and I was just saying yes to every inquiry because I needed the money to get started. And I wasn't confident in like the process of commissions, like that communication with the customer. That's something I've learned over time, which is the most important thing about commissions because it's a really personal experience. You're not just drawing something and then trying to sell it. You're creating the vision of for someone else. Um, and you're communicating that while putting your own personal artistic spin on it. So, so it's your style and it's identifiable as you, as the artist that's created it so it's a lot of communication and a lot of um, dedication as well to really produce good quality pieces every time for each specific customer and that's something that I've learned over time um, has been very important and things like with my business when I first started I didn't know anything about marketing I didn't know anything about PR I didn't know anything about how to manage my time like I'm an organized person anyway I love planning and I love um, scheduling and highlighting things and all that kind of stuff um, but I didn't really know like in terms of creating artwork one you need to sort of be in the right mindset to create you can't be stressed out 
you can't feel overworked you can't you know negative feelings don't help the creativity so you need to like figure out how you're going to put yourself in that creative move mood every day in order to produce what you need to um so learning things like that really helped and time blocking was really useful way of learning um how to organize my time so like every morning i would specifically do my admin between this time and this time and then the evenings i would draw or paint between this time and this time and that would help me concentrate on those specific tasks during those times and not allow any other distractions so, um, and then I learning about marketing, how to do social media marketing and email marketing and all the different types. Like I've done a few courses on it um, just to really invest in my business and get it going to a point where it's, you know, running smoothly and then I can grow it um, to be a proper career, which I have done. It's my full-time job. Um, it's how I make my living and it's how I've been able to move to France. So yeah, it's um, it's going well. <laughs> it is awesome. And then you decided to turn this into, uh, let's say, develop into another step and write a book. Yes. So now that I felt this time, it was about May last year, I felt like I had reached the point where I knew enough to start teaching how to start. Like knowing, okay, you know, how do you even start a business? How do you even start selling your artwork? And I felt like I got to the point where I knew enough to tell people how to start it. I really wanted to promote that art is a real career and you can make money from selling your artwork, like real money, not just like hobby side hustle money. This is like real money, full-time employment kind of situation. So I wrote this book. Art is my career, how to start an art business, um, which is full of information and really organized with charts and it's all color coordinated because I love a bit of color coordination. Um, and I've basically put all the basics down for any creative. You don't even have to be an artist. Like my sister-in-law, who's a musician, also read this book and found it really useful for marketing her music. So it's, based, it's all the basics that you need for run, starting and running a business. And so I launched this May last year um, as this physical copy and an ebook that people can buy. And with it, um, I also included six downloadable documents to help people out. So there's like a social media checklist and a commission spreadsheet that they can fill in and a, a branding guidelines to help them really focus on their branding of their business and implement that. Um, and also with this book, they can um, be added to my Facebook community group where they can ask questions and talk to each other. And the community groups turn into a really lovely place for artists because art can be such a solitary career. Like you just sit down all day, not really talking to anyone or anything. So I wanted the group to be somewhere where artists can chat and make friends and have some sort of sounding board if they've got any new ideas like you know put it out there and ask someone and talk to people and get feedback on you know I've just created this website let me know what you think that kind of thing so it's been really helpful for artists this Facebook community group and I'm really proud of it it's grown into exactly what I would have needed five years ago when I started and that's what this book is it's everything that I would have wanted to start reading before starting my business so yeah okay of course success does not come without a cost like what the challenges are there in your business um definitely when i started things like you have to do make some sacrifices in terms of money and well especially money is the main thing like i quit my job and i only had like a month of savings to get us through the next month um, so we had to figure out quickly, okay, what are we going to do for money while my business is getting started? So we decided to move to a cheaper location to make sure all the outgoings were like literally as, as low as it can go. So that was one of the sacrifices. We no longer lived in the city, we lived in the countryside, but it was cheaper and we had a bigger space for me to create my studio and to start really grow my business. So I guess it's a sacrifice. It's like a compromise, isn't it? You have to make compromises to grow um, your business. And 
definitely when it comes to money and starting, you have to be really realistic um, and sit yourself down and think, okay, so this is how many paintings or commissions I need to com complete per month in order to meet my outgoing and pay for my bills. And that's like your realistic plan for when you're first starting out. And then it can just grow from there. Um, other things like, um, I have found it challenging when it's a bad reference photo from a customer. So if they sent me like a really bad picture, like it's all blurry or it's really dark and you can't really tell what the animal is. Um, I've had to decline ones that are really bad and they physically don't have any more because unfortunately like the pets passed away and they don't have any other pictures. They just have this one bad photo. So unless unless I can do something with it, I've had to decline ones like that. It's only happened a couple of times, but you have to be really strict with yourself because if you can't deliver a high quality piece of artwork to that person, then don't say yes. Like it's bad, it reflects badly on your business and you are running a business when you're an artist, whether you, you say it's a business or not. If you're you know, doing a service in exchange for money, it is a business. So make sure that it, you're doing the best that you can do every time you do it. And if there's anything like, you know, a terrible picture or, or a hard to work with client, um, you need to put some things in place to help you get through that to make sure you're still on brand and delivering high quality pieces of art and still enjoying it. Like there's no point doing it if you don't enjoy it. Like I, I enjoy everything. It can be hard but it doesn't mean I don't like it, so, yeah. Okay, my other question here is about the business requirements. Like, where, where is the line between where you can put your creativity and where uh, the business requirements, like, force you or oblige you to follow certain uh, touches? I think when it comes to business and art, it mixes quite a lot. There isn't really a clear line, because when it comes to business, you need to be creative about running the business especially when you don't have any money it's like say i you can't advertise because you have no money so what are the other ways you're going to build awareness for your business and that's where the creativity comes in you know you can use things like social media which is you know really good but what else you can do things like you know send out flyers make phone calls like go to if you're doing pet portraits you can go to vet clinics and give out your business card and things like that like I think with business, you need a creative mindset and it does sort of mesh the two together. You need to be creative in order to do your business, but then you need to run your business in order to sell your creative hobby. So I do feel like they merge quite a lot. There isn't really a defined line there. Okay, now you have reached this stage in your business. Like, are you satisfied with your decisions so far? Yes, I, I think I've achieved more in the last five years than I did as an engineer. Um, you know, I, I achieved a lot as an engineer, but I'm so much happier now. And I feel like I'm really getting to know me and express, you know, my viewpoint of the world and express myself. And, and just, you know, I'm also doing things to help people, like doing pet portraits for people gives me a lot of satisfaction especially when you know their pets passed away or they've been given it as a gift to someone like it means a lot to them and they're really grateful and that makes me feel good about myself as well like I'm helping them you know give this special gift they are I'm helping them you know through the mourning process of losing their pet like it's not just doing a random doodle that no one sees like I'm physically doing these things to help people in their lives and then is being hung on their wall and treasured, you know, through their lives. And it's just, it's a really lovely thing to do. And, and that's what my book has given me as well. Like I've had so many emails from artists saying how much they've loved my book and how helpful it is. And it's the exact thing that they needed. Um, so again, like it, it's just so fulfilling. I think it's more fulfilling because I feel like I'm giving and helping so much more now than I ever did as an engineer. It has been more than an inspiration and more than awesome talking to you, uh, Tema from France. Thank you so much yeah. for that. 
Oh, my pleasure.